Imagine you are running a startup in the energy sector, but unlike most startups which are strapped for cash, your annual budget is about 650 million US dollars. Well, that's the reality for Mark Hutchinson, the chief executive at Fortescue Future Industries, which is funded by Fortescue's iron ore business. Ross Greenwood spoke to Mark this week and started by asking how FFI interacts with the board of Fortescue, which has recently appointed Fiona Hick as the chief executive of the iron ore company. Huge welcome to Fiona uh, coming into the business. I think the way to look at it, Ross, is that when Elizabeth uh, Gaines was CEO, the uh, FFI business sat really underneath her. So she was the sole CEO of the business and she reported the board. Uh, with me coming on board, what happened was that FFI was kind of broken out from underneath FMG. So now we have a, a metals business, which Fiona will head up, and an energy business, which I head up. And the, the both of us report to the board. So that's the way that uh, we will we'll be uh, organised. And so you kind of look at us as we, we're, we're CEOs of separate businesses or we're, we're joint CEOs of the entire company. Is it reasonable to say that your business, which is going to very much rely on future energy generation, be that from solar or be that from the creation of green hydrogen, that that very much relies still on the revenues that come from the iron ore business? I mean, in the last financial year, $17.4 billion US worth of yeah. revenue, underlying EBITDA of $10.6 billion, that, that you are really going to be draining capital, draining, if you like, resources from on that business for a period of time until you get some sort of, you know, quantifiable mass in terms of a, an economic business model? Well, certainly, I've, I think the way to look at this is we're, a, you know, the energy business is a startup, right? So I've, I just happen to be in one of the best, you know, uh, capitalised startups in the world. So the intention is that, you know, that uh, we use some capital from the uh, metals business to seed our business. And as projects come on stream, we will make capital decisions based on what's the best use of capital for the company, whether they're on the metal side or on the energy side. But the intention is to, to build an energy business, uh, a global energy business, and we will be the, the world's leading developer of green hydrogen. That's the intention. We think the opportunity is enormous. And uh, it's our job to, to explain to the board, also to investors and the markets, why that we're such a good investment to for the company to be making, but also for the, the market to be making the company. So, And so is the model for Fortescue Future Industries, especially around green hydrogen, to develop the technology so that that can be replicated around the world? Or is it to physically make the green hydrogen and to ship that to the world? Which is the best economic model long term? So we're going to do both, Ross. You know, we are... Uh, a global business, so we're looking at pr producing green hydrogen all around the world. The United States, uh, which is a huge opportunity because of the Inflation Reduction Act at the moment, they've kind of uh, leapfrogged everybody by really subsidising green hydrogen, making it competitive with grey. So that's a great place to start. But we're also looking at you know, how we supply green hydrogen to Europe, particularly. And we have a relationship with E.ON, who has a huge demand for green hydrogen. And that will come out of Brazil, out of the Middle East, North Africa. So we have relationships and uh, we're developing projects in all these places and in Australia as well. So Australia is going to play a huge part in, the, in this kind of new revolution. I kind of view it as almost going back to 1907 when Shell and BP were formed uh, at the start of really the, the oil industry. And, and we're at that kind of point now. So, so I think about it as we're doing that, we're going to create a, a, a huge green uh, hydrogen business, but also on the way, we're going to need not only just supply of, of equipment, but we need to develop the technology. And I come from uh, 24 years at General Electric, and I've seen this play out before, particularly in the wind turbine industry, where once you get scale, you go down the cost curve really quickly, and also you develop uh, the innovation which, you know, uh, changes the industry. And that's going to happen to our world, and we're going to be part of that. So we're going to develop the technology as well to supply ourselves, and we want to be at the forefront of the innovation so that we are kind of will become a, a green energy and a green technology company as well. If I look at the technology behind LNG, say, for example, uh, that gas industry is driven by you find the resource 
at its source, wherever that might be, Northwest Shelf or whatever, you then liquefy it, put it into ships and send it to customers in other parts of the world. Is that the right model for creating green hydrogen? Because obviously you've got to have large scale, um, you know, solar or large scale wind projects to be able to create it. So is it best created close to the user or is it best to be created and then exported? What's the best model? Yeah. So, look, I think you, the way to think about it is that, you know, whether it's electrons or molecules, at the end of the day, probably doesn't matter to the end customer. So, you know, and, and if, you can, if you can actually make the power and put a cable and, and transport it in electrons, you should probably do that. So for local markets, make, that makes a ton of sense, right? But when you're trying to ship energy uh, from Australia to Europe, that doesn't work. So you've got to do something different, and that's when you change it to molecules. So I think I look at it very much the way you described it, uh, that we will look for you know, the best sources of power around the world at scale, and we'll be we're looking at ways that we can transport that power. And uh, really what hydrogen is is a battery, really. And so if you have to put it in molecule form, you put it on a ship and you ship it. Um, but uh, we'll be looking at both electrons... So looking at opportunities to provide power locally, as well as molecules, which is when you can't do the electrons, you put it in a, mole in a molecule form and you ship it to different places around the world. So when you look at right now the East Coast gas crisis and also the electricity crisis in prices which has come as a result, you know, you look from your perspective of trying to create this new industry around green hydrogen and also the electrons that come from the renewable energy, how do you view that? Because it clearly seems as though there's a gap before sufficient technology for the renewables is available to really create that, uh, that, that sort of of electricity, the source of energy that the, the nation needs. Yeah, so I, th I think the way to think about it, look, n there's not one size fits all. So every market around the world is different. And some markets, you know, are completely domestic. So I kind of view the United States as being a completely domestic market. And they won't, you know, export a molecule. Um, whereas you kind of go to a place like Namibia or, or Egypt, there isn't a domestic market. So Australia is kind of in the middle to some extent. If I kind of look at the east coast of Australia, there's definitely the future demand for green hydrogen from the east coast. But the power price is expensive. So this is where, you know, I think government's going to have to play a huge role in actually figuring out a way to make green hydrogen competitive and to start that industry. I think it's a bit different on, in, in the western states of Australia where we have the ch opportunity over time to look at scale and get that power price down for export. But the East Coast, and I think the encouragement I have to the Australian government is that, you know, to be competitive, to attract those investment dollars compared to, you know, why would I invest in the United States or in Brazil or Namibia or Egypt or, or, or Eastern Australia, they're going to need some help to get the industry started. OK, so then come finally, when will we know that the model, the business model you're working towards, when will we know that it's viable? How much time do you think you need to build the economic case that justifies the investment in it? So, look, we are going full steam. So this is going to happen. I'm highly confident that uh, we will uh, do this. And we have uh, many projects around the world we're seriously looking at getting into a phase where we put them into uh, FID, which is our you know, final investment decision. Um, so that's coming out very quickly. And you'll see us make decisions early next year uh, where we actually are, are going to uh, FID. And we hope to be producing green hydrogen in 24, 25. So very, very soon. This is going to happen, Ross. Uh, we, we are going to do this on a global scale. And I'm very, very confident that the economics will work.